Hello, it's Brian McCarthy from Bold and Break, and we are going to be discussing displacement maps in Redshift. If you're struggling with your displacement maps, look no further. So let's have a quick look at this very simple setup. I'm using the Redshift node editor, I'm using Maxon Noise. So it's just your Veroni one, and I've just set it up with placement tag and redshift placement. Now, if we go into this, start to see this pinching occur in render. Not what we want, this ugly, these kind of gross shadows. And the displacement isn't that sharp, it's quite blurred. How redshift uh, treats displacement is quite interesting. It gives you an array of options, like it does with everything. If we were at the wireframe generator in Redshift, plug it into our surface, and this shows us the output Redshift is giving in the subdivision, which is really helpful. If you don't use the wireframe node from Redshift, now you know why it's there. But if we were to change the minimum edge length to one, it loads more subdivision. The reason this is, is this is changing the length the edge length between each polygon. If you have an edge length of four and you go down to one, it's going to like quadruple the amount of subdivision. The advantage of doing this means there's a lot more subdivision for Redshift to work with when it's displacing the mesh. So let's see what this looks like when we bring this down to two. Actually, before we do that, let's go back so you have a visual reference. And you can already see a difference down to one, quite cool, but we're still getting little bits here. So let's, you know, bring our maximum subdivision eight. Now we're getting a very clean mesh. Maybe bring our edge up to two again. There's a lot of subdivision to work with. Redshift is a bit slow at the moment. We can freeze our geometry. And by freezing the geometry here in this tab, we get much more freedom of movement because now all the geometry in this tag has been frozen. It doesn't have to render it each time. Quick trick there for anyone who is struggling when they're subdivision. Another thing we can do is we can actually take down the maximum displacement, which is quite high displacement scale. So we brought that down to five. And I come back to that blurred edge, bring it up to seven. More about finding a middle ground. And then enable auto bump map is actually unticked. And um, by default, it is ticked. If we were to tick that, we're getting a much better mesh. So maybe we can take this back down to five. Seven. So you can already see the complexities of Redshift with just displacement map. It's about experimenting, tweaking your settings. More importantly, it's about understanding what's going on in the back end of your render engine. So another really helpful trick is to tick limit out of frustum tessellation. And what this does is it limits the subdivisions outside of the camera view. And that helps the efficiency of the render. Now you need to be careful with this because what happens is when you limit it too much, you change the makeup of the displacement in the camera view. That is a lot to take in. In regards to the limit for us, a visual representation, I'll just, I'll just have it up here, is out of Frostum tessellation. It's in the Redshift doc. Anyone can go on and look at these documents. So if your camera view is here, it's going to limit the tessellation in these outside areas just so the render engine isn't just smoothing and subdividing the whole mesh. It's only subdividing what's in the camera view. So the more you limit, it may affect the have a domino effect on the polygons closer to your camera view, if that makes sense. So it's changing the the mesh dependent on your camera view. So this would be careful, don't limit this too much, but it will definitely help a little bit of efficiency. Here, um, these kind of fixes for this displacement map and subdividing it correctly, they are only specific to maybe this noise or this displacement map. 
Uh, every displacement map will need a little bit of its own tweaking and just scale it in your um, maximum displacement and you know, scale it here. I chose a map that kind of was showing some particular challenges, you know. So if you run into any displacement issues, I hope this helps. Um, have you run into any displacement issues? Do you have a better way of doing it? Have I explained everything? Kind of let me know in the comments below. Remember to subscribe. Look forward to doing more Redshift tutorials in due time. Thank you for watching and goodbye.